Hey everybody, today we are going to actually be predicting some daily fantasy scores uh, using some machine learning algorithms. I know we've been working up to this point for a while and we're finally here. It's going to be a pretty simple introduction to it. Um, we're just going to be using some basic stats, uh, nothing too fancy today, just to kind of get the concepts down so everyone gets some exposure and experience with the algorithms. Um, and as always, you take it, you run with it, you have your own stats, you plug them in, you get to work it on your own. It's going to be a good time. As I'm sure you saw in my last video, the Patreon is now live. Um, see the link down in the description if you'd like to join, get a little more access for me. We do have a poll going on in the Patreon right now to help decide what the next topic is going to be after we get the basics of the machine learning down. So if you'd like to have a voice in that, uh, go check out the Patreon, put a vote in. Let's go ahead and jump into it today. So we have our import statements here. Go ahead, import that just like normal. Um, you will probably need to do some pip installs. Actually, you shouldn't. You should already have sklearn from previous videos. Um, I've just prepared a sample data set here to run on this. Um, it's very simple. It just goes off of box score data from last season. Um, I believe it's the same data set that we did the last three, five, and seven rolling averages on. So I'm just pulling in those numbers. That's what we're going to be using to predict. And obviously, you know, this is not an ideal setup. These are not the, the be-all, end-all stats and numbers to use. This is just going to be an example so you can kind of see how it works and how good it does with just this information. So we have our data set. We're going to go ahead and drop down and we just want the player, the last three, five, seven, and then the fantasy points for that game. I'm not going to use season average because this is going to be the full season average. It's going to be the same for every single game for that player. In theory, if you'd want to do that, I don't like bringing in their season average. What I will typically do, though, is look at their last three, five, seven, and instead of representing that as the points, I would represent it as the delta from their season average, so you can see if they've been playing better or worse than they normally do for the season. But these are going to be skewed at the beginning because, you know, that's the entire season average, and you'd probably want the average up to that point if you were doing this consecutively throughout the season. So we're not going to bring that in for our purposes today. So... Our data set is now that, <clears throat> and let's take a look at just Aaron Gordon and make sure that it worked right. So, yep, so we've got Aaron Gordon, last three, five, seven, and our fantasy points. And we can check the bottom, same deal. So that's good. We see everything's working fine. So we kind of talked about this with the unsupervised learning, with the clustering, if you remember that, between like features and labels. So in the machine learning world, if you go and you're doing any of your own research, looking into new ways of doing things and not just following what I'm saying here, which I encourage you all to do, there is a very large amount of data and information out there to learn and get familiar with. Um, but features are typically going to be referring to the raw data that you're feeding in that you want to use to calculate your prediction, and the label is going to be the end result prediction. Now, you're not going to have that um, in unsupervised learning because you don't have a label that you're going towards trying to calculate. With supervised learning though, you have the endpoint for historical data, already completed examples of what you're looking to do. So you're basically saying you want to use your features to calculate your label. That's all that is. Just a little bit different terminology, but it's not too complex. So, you will need to break your data into feature data sets and label data sets. So what we're doing here is uh, creating a list of those column names for the features and then one for the label names. And what we're going to do is create a new data set of just the features, okay, and a new data set of just the labels. And you don't need to bring the player name in. Um, the, the data stays in order there, and it's, yeah, don't need to worry about that. The name of the player is irrelevant. You're just looking at the data that the player has. So now we need to convert from our pandas data set into a numpy array. And all that is is basically numbers only. It's more of a mathematical formulation because a, a pandas data set or data frame can hold all, all types of information. It doesn't have to be numerical. They can be objects. Um, it can be <clears throat> strings. It can be all sorts of stuff. A numpy array is just going to be numbers. 
And for machine learning models, you have to just feed in numbers. If you have a text field that you want to calculate on, you'll need to, I believe the term is hot code, hot encode it. And basically what it'll do is it will create a new column. And this is just a, a command you can run that will automatically do this to you if you point it to the column. It basically just creates a column for every different text value there is. So if you wanted to do like day of the week, um, you know, you'd have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can't feed those values in. So you could either go through and assign those a numerical value, but I, that typically is not a good idea to do. Um, you'd rather do the hot encoding, and what that would do is you'd have a column for Monday, a column for Tuesday, a column for Wednesday in your features data set, and that would just be looked at as a binary. That would be 0 or 1. So each of your values is going to have a 1 in one of them and a 0 in the rest. So if it was a Monday game, there would be a 1 in Monday and a 0 in all the other days of the week. Um, so just a heads up, if there is um, text features you'd like to use, that's typically how, it, how it's gone about doing all right, <clears throat> back to what we have here. We have our labels and our features. Take a look at our labels. Just show you the format. It looks very similar to a data frame, just instead of that pretty, you know, table look, it's just an array. So it's, you know, just going to be these values going down. Uh, a good way to think of an array, if you remember doing uh, matrices or a matrix in math classes at any point in time, that's basically what an array is, is just a, a matrix. So next thing up, We've got to create our train data set, test data set, train labels and test labels. If you remember this from the clustering, this is where we actually train our algorithm and it, it figures out how it's going to calculate those fantasy points. And that's pretty simple. Um, you can assign them all at once, putting them in this form because the output of this function is going to be all four of those data sets in order. Feed it your features, feed it your labels, and then you define how big a portion of your data set you want to test on and it, there's a little bit of I don't want to say science that goes into deciding that but you want your train size so the inverse of your test size you want your train size to be big enough that you're not just overfitting for a small data set um, so it's much better to have a smaller test size than a larger test size. Definitely less than 50%. I would say 40, so this 0.4 is about as big as I would ever go for a test size because you want to be training on the larger data set. Otherwise, you'll overfit it for the training data, and then it's gonna, you're going to get your numbers out. And it's like, oh, my God, this is the best model ever. You know, it's 95% accurate when it trains. And then you test it, and it's like 72% accurate because it's overfitted to your training data, because it's just training on that. But that's something that takes a little bit of trial and error, and it can vary on data sets. You can maybe go bigger, maybe need to go smaller. It depends. And then random state again, just defining that so it's repeatable within our, our little universe that we're working on here. So we run that. We can take a look at our arrays in the train and test. So we have our train data here, less three, less five, less seven. Our test data here, which is a much smaller data set, same thing, 357, and then our train labels and our test labels. So that's going to be a 60-40 split for both of them. Um, not a whole lot to look at there, just kind of showing you that they're still NumPy arrays and that's how it's broken out. So now, we and one thing to note, this function here isn't doing all it's doing is breaking out the, your data set into those different groups. Like it's not doing anything as far as machine learning. Um, just want to throw that out there. So now we're going to actually create our decision tree regressor. Okay. And this is just a single decision tree. Okay. This isn't the random forest that we talked about. This is going to be a little bit simpler. So we're going to go ahead and run that, create our decision tree. And then we're going to, tr so fit is typically the terminology used to actually create, um, like train it on your training data is what you call you're fitting it to your data. Uh, basically it's learning your data. And then we're going to print out the node count and the max tree depth, which we briefly talked about in the last video. Um, and you can see this is a massive tree. So this has 57, if you remember those little boxes, that's how many nodes. So there's 57 nodes and it's eight levels deep. So that's going to be 
pretty big. Um, that's not ideal. That's going to be way too specific. But this is just, we're just learning. This is the intro video, so we're not going to take too much, uh, put too much importance on that. So we trained it, our predictions, and we're going to get our test predictions. And we're going to create a data frame. And then we're going to take a look at it. So this is our test data here. Um, we really don't need to look at the describe, but what we're going to throw in is going to be the actual score, so our test labels, our predicted score. So these are our predictions. As you can see, predictions, tree.predict on our test data, and then our train predictions were tree.predict train. So that way we get a predicted score for every single value in our data set, not just the test and not just the train. And we're going to take a look at those, and we're going to look at the actual score the predicted score, and the error. So we're going to take our actual minus our predicted to see how far off it is. So we got a couple that are pretty good, you know, off by 2, off by 2.3, off by 17.4. That's not good. And we can look and try and figure out why. And I have no idea why it only predicted 14 points. It must be because the last three was so low, because these are both highs. So it looks like we're very heavily taking into account, like, your last three score is probably very high up on that decision tree. And that looks like it's going to play a very big part. So that's just glancing at this. That's something we can see. Um, so we know that this probably is not the best algorithm, but it's not that bad. And also keep in mind, this was done without scaling any of the data. Okay. So this is taking in the raw scores. Typically you're going to want to scale the data as well. So we're going to do this whole thing over again, but we're going to scale the data. Um, and what that's going to do, let's just take a look at X real quick, is put it into an array and basically standardize our data, which I believe we did for the clustering. Um, so you should be familiar with it. It's a, it's, it's a little, little complex at having to deal with variance and whatnot. I know speaking... I explained it incorrectly in the video, so I put in a little graphic explaining how you actually calculate the scaled data. But it's a good way to think of it is it'll take like the average, and then this is kind of your variance leaving the average. So this is a certain amount less, a certain amount more. But it just makes it a little bit easier where you don't have such a wide range. Um, it just makes it easier for a lot of the, the machine learning algorithms to get more accurate results typically. So what we're going to do is go through with the scaled data and then kind of compare um, how far off and how good, quote unquote, those predictions were. And see if we did better with scaled data or unscaled data. So we're just doing the exact same thing here. We'll go ahead and do random state zero again. And then we're going to look at the describe for both. So we did the exact same thing we did before. Except this is just going to be on our test data. So this is just, both of these were just on our test data. Sorry if I did not clarify that before. So we can look at our average error. is 7.96 for both. Yeah, this looks pretty much identical. It is very identical. So we can see it really didn't have an impact at all using the same random state. But if we want to come up here and run a different random state, uh, we'll probably get a little bit different. No? Yeah, a little bit. The minimum error for this one was 2. The minimum for this one was 1.9. Um, the mean was a little bit higher here than it was there. So again, these aren't good examples of how to use it. Um, this is just kind of a, a brief introduction. This is like the most basic algorithm we can use, just a single decision tree. So going forward, we'll be using a random forest uh, regression tool rather than a single decision tree. And what that's going to do is it's going to make X number of decision trees with a certain amount of randomness in their creation and then kind of scrunch them all into one output and take like the weighted average of those results so that alone should give us better results than this. And we'll probably do it in the same system so we can compare the results side by side. But we're going to do the same data set. And then we're going to start looking at how to use better data sets, what types of data sets to think about while we're doing it. Um, as well as how to save a model. Because once you have 
a big enough data set and you train test the model, you're happy with it, you like it, you incorporate it into your system, you don't wanna to have to be training and testing every single time. So you can save your model and just call your model back into commission basically and run it after the train test. So you would just have to run your prediction here after you bring your model back in. So we'll go over all of that next time. Uh, I just wanted a quick basic video to kind of get everyone's feet wet without getting too in the weeds or getting too complex. So that's going to be all today. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. Thank you to all of my current Patreon members. Uh, you will be seeing their names on screen in a moment as a thank you to them. If you want to be a part of that community, don't hesitate to come check us out. You can get involved uh, in the Discord, hanging out with us for as little as 5 bucks a month. Um, and it goes up from there, so you can kind of figure out what tier you want to be, what rewards you want. Get involved there. Uh, I've been very pleasantly surprised with how much fun we've had chatting in the Discord, talking about daily fantasy sports, gambling strategy, uh, some code tips, writing some code, helping everyone out. It's a good time. And especially if you want to be able to help influence where we go from here, make sure and sign up in the next week or two and answer that poll, because we're going to be getting into some... Uh, quite a bit of options going forward, whether we're revisiting a topic we've already done and getting more in detail on it, or we want to kind of branch out and go to a new topic, have a new optimizer system, uh, new web scraping information, more advanced web scraping, more advanced data analysis, more advanced machine learning, whatever it is you guys are interested in, um, hop in the Patreon and fill out that poll. And with that, I will let you all go. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.